Blue Planet Energy was started by our founder, Hank Rogers, with a simple mission to end the use of carbon-based fuels. Today, led by an awesome team, partners, and industry experts, together, we're bringing his mission to life. We work diligently with all our partners, including Launch Alaska, Ajito, Alaska Native Renewables, Daylight Energy, and Sub-Zero Electric, along with NANA, Northwest Arctic Borough, AVEC, the Arctic Energy Office, and the entire team here at Blue Planet Energy, working diligently on the logistics and to make sure the Blue Ion LX gets delivered to the remote village in Shangnak, Alaska. So we just got through TSA. Uh, this is actually the first leg of the journey to Shugnak. We'll be flying to Kotzebue, which is uh, really a hub community for remote Alaska. Uh, so that means we get to fly jet service out there. Um, but the, the planes and the vehicles will continue to get smaller as we go. To operate either of the forward crew doors, simply just take the handle This is the village of Shugnak, Alaska. It's a small Alaskan native community about 150 miles east of Kotzebue on the western shores of the Kobuk River. It was founded in 1899, but they moved from what is now the Kobuk village site to here in 1927 because of erosion on the river. The residents here hunt, fish, and forage for much of their food. But like many of us, They've gotten used to modern conveniences over the years, like electric power. Shugnak relies on a diesel-based power system. In fact, many of the 86 students that go to the school behind us have never known life in the village without the constant hum of diesel in the background, the smell of exhaust fumes, or the taste of fuel in the air. Fuel cost right now is $8.25 per gallon. If we had a uh, different resource to have an outlet with, I think uh, we, we can uh, bring our uh, cost of living down. If it's on the uh, fuel side, on the electricity uh, side, when you pay an $8.25 per uh, gallon for fuel, Stove or then you uh, go to Anchorage and uh, pay uh, three, three uh, something. That's a uh, wide gap. The uh, cost is not always in there. It is the uh, cost of transporting it up. I mean, it's loud. I mean, you know, those uh, motors run a lot I mean, all night long, and it, and, it, and it's just loud, loud, loud. And then over time, once once you can. Uh, Continue to hear that it is hurting people's ears, be it got kids' ears and all of that. But also, it is the you no know, smell, and then it also people have to take charge of making sure the uh, fuel is in the diesel to uh, keep it uh, running. And and then uh, we have seen some some of that over, over the uh, years. If uh, somebody not maintaining it, it will cut itself off and then gotta refuel it. Try not to have power in the uh, winter time when it's negative 20 to uh, 40 BI low. Funded by the USDA and the Northwest Arctic Borough, the project you see around me is designed to address just these challenges. In fact, two of our 2020 cohort companies are critical to the success of this project. Blue Planet Energy and Ajito were a part of our 2020 tech deployment track where they were paired rapidly with the Northwest Arctic Borough and the local contractors that are building this project now. I hope it's gonna be some, some good uh, you know, exposure just to show these, these communities that you can, you know, accomplish these projects in, in these remote locations, um, you know, just to show that you can integrate both solar PV and battery energy storage um, into a, in, into a, a rural microgrid, um, 
you know, we've got some interesting um, technologies on this project. Um, so we've got uh, bifacial solar mods here. Uh, we've got uh, lithium ion battery storage. So we've got an interesting uh, partnering with um, uh, Blue Planet Energy. They have an interesting battery chemistry, LFP, compared to um, some of the other uh, battery chemistries out there. Um, so just showing that you can um, have a, a good quality, uh, you know, well-constructed project um, in, in these remote places. We chose Blue Planet Energy um, just, you know, it's a, after looking at the company um, and just the, the, the um, battery chemistry that they use, LFP compared to, you know, your traditional NMC or, you know, NCA batteries that use cobalt. Um, just the, um, you know, the reduction in, you know, potential volatility with these batteries. Um, they have longer life cycles. Um, so I think LFP, you know, has a lot of uh, potential for, you know, these grid scale type projects in the future. Um, and it's good to partner with a company like Blue Planet Energy, you know, that, that has a similar focus to us on, you know, sustainability and, um, you know, just, um, you know, helping rural remote places. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been great. We're excited to keep working with them and hopefully we'll have a lot more projects with them going forward. Blue Planet Energy is supplying their Blue Ion LX energy storage system. Not only will their batteries be able to absorb the power from the solar farm you see around me, but they'll also give the local utility, Alaska Village Electric Cooperative, the ability to turn off their diesels and run on 100% clean energy for hours at a time. So the battery chemistry that they've chosen for this project is from Blue Planet Energy. We've certainly been uh, hesitant to jump into the energy storage for uh, a number of reasons. The battery technology is, I think, probably the best chemistry or technology that's available for rural communities at this point. We have uh, wind systems that we have displaced up to 50% of diesel usage in, in some of our communities but uh, the only solar arrays we have now are much smaller uh, arrays and they don't have any energy stores, so they're really just capped to what they can produce at the time that they're, they're producing and don't have any ability to time shift if, if they're over generating. Um, the average load in Shungnak is about 200 kW, peak load's about 300 kW. This solar array is 225 kW, so it has the ability in the summertime to produce all the power that's needed for the community. And part of the intricacy of this project, uh, you're going to be talking to Amy later about how uh, the controls are configured in order to actually go diesels off. Ajito's ARC microgrid controller will coordinate the solar and the energy storage to ensure that the lowest cost power is provided while also ensuring safe and reliable operation. In addition, it serves the critical function of communicating with the AVEC power plant so that they can turn their diesels off at the best times. The new switchgear will allow the diesel plants to integrate with all of the battery and solar by being able to collect all the information that is needed for the controls to be able to make the right decisions about which engines to run and to be able to talk to the Agito controls to determine are we ready to turn the diesels off or not. This system's somewhat unique in that it's actually designed to enable diesel off operation. What that means is that because of the energy storage system, we'll be able to turn the diesels off but keep the lights on to the community. It also means during that time, the community will be operating on up to 100% clean energy. If we would turn the diesels off in time as uh, we Trans, transition into the solar panels for our village. It would it would it would it would mean a one, a safer in our environment. From the from the uh, from the noise to the clean air, people know when the uh, generator goes off, no power. But now we are gonna have have to train our brain to like, okay, they're they're off. 
and we still got light. We still got power. So wow, what? This is like a, a, a new world. 